Welcome to Around the Peninsula. I'm Army Sergeant Moses Ward. Knowing how to administer first aid is a necessity in today's military. Staff Sergeant Chris Bevins shows us how personnel at Kunsan Air Base put airmen to the test. What? I can't hear anything but ringing. Casualties right, fill Kunsan Air Base's theater during the chilly early morning hours. Where am I? They need first aid. What? Unfortunately, there are other airmen waiting to help. Yeah, see if we can for, him. for Tech Sergeant Richard Moss, a day at work normally means attending to his duties at the 8th Comptroller Squadron. But as part of this unit effectiveness inspection, today he's the first line of medical treatment for sick and wounded airmen. Well, there, there are definitely some sharp contrasts. Uh, you know, nothing that we deal with is, is this emergent. Um, but I also see a lot of parallels too that, uh, you know, you're, you're looking out for, for that airman's well-being. You're gonna be all right, sir. Um, and you're trying to give them the best, the best service. We got first responders on the way um, that you can here. We were trying to give them the highest uh, standard <coughs> of care that we were capable of providing. <coughs> you want to lay them on side? This mass casualty exercise gives Sergeant Moss a chance to use a self-aid and buddy care training. Even though it's just pretend, it's situations like this that keep him sharp. I think that's that's the the, the takeaway, as far as you know, doing a, a simulation like this is to uh, is to to play it as real um, as as you can. And you know, for me personally, um, you know, I, I tried to to connect with each of the the casualties and uh, and and let them know that you know there's somebody here and anyway, they care about you down. and we're trying to trying to help uh, in, in do everything we can to help them staff sergeant chris bevins kunsan air base korea you got help in route dalton you still hanging in there man this exercise gives fellow airmen a chance to see what it's like to provide first aid under stressful conditions there are major changes in store for officer evaluation reports Specialist Pedro Amador joined Army officers at Camp Casey to discuss this transition with a subject matter expert. Hey, good morning, everybody. In cool. a classroom at we the Camp Casey right. Community right. Activity right. Center, right. Area 1 officers right. and warrant officers stand up to ask questions about the revised officer evaluation report, which is undergoing major changes for the first time in 15 years. On this new OER, how will the branch managers see that? How will they data mine it? At the end of a question stands a subject matter expert who was identified by the Human Resources Command at Fort Knox, Kentucky to be part of a mobile training team to come to Korea and brief the Army's newly revised officer evaluation report. My question back to the system is... The most rewarding part of the brief to me is all the questions that are asked. This new evaluation is a brand new thing. The last time a new evaluation was rolled out in the Army was back in either 1997 or 1998. I was a second lieutenant. So they know the importance of this. Everybody's taking it very seriously and many, many, many officers have good questions that they ask. Are they separate? Yes, they're separate. They are separate. They Some are of the common so questions yes. are centered around the, the management of the profile on the radar. Managing a profile can be somewhat complicated for many officers um, that have never done that before. Being able to answer all the questions is still not easy to Major Trotter, even though managing evaluations has been part of his job since he first switched from enlisted to officer. I've had the benefit of being able to have that knowledge built into me along the way. By all means, I'm a, I'm a field grade major now. I, I still don't have all the answers. I see it as a great move, and I see it as a great transition for the Army, um, continually improving. Do that same type of thing. Specialist Pedro Amador, Camp Casey, Korea. Checked it at least once. There are a total of 11 teams conducting OER briefings taking place throughout U.S. Army installations globally. Teamwork helps build trust and cooperation. Army Private Trooper Johnson shares duties with a unique partner, which makes a day at the office truly interesting. I'm Private Trooper Johnson, 31 Bravo, with the 903rd Military Working Dog Detachment. I'm a military policeman and a dog handler. We search all kinds of buildings for narcotics and explosives, and our dogs are also used as a non-lethal way to apprehend our subjects. The reason I became a dog handler is because I grew up with dogs in my household. I've always loved playing with them and being around them, and now I actually get the opportunity to work with them. The reason I think dogs are so amazing is because they help in so many different ways. They make my job faster, easier, safer. Today we did training at the Camp Henry Theater 
We went in, searched the entire building, looking for a final response in our dog. Whenever we got that final response with our dog, we paid him with a Kong and verbal praise. Good job. This is my dog Jambo. He is a detection slash patrol dog. He is currently seven years old. And I love this dog because of how loyal he is, how patient with me he is, and how hard he works. They can go into places that I can't go into. They can detect, they can use their nose to find things so I don't have to physically go through it by hand. Drugs or a person, whatever we find in the building, that's the happiest moment because we know we've done our job when we find what we're supposed to find. After getting job experience, Private Johnson's goal is to become a military working dog master trainer to help train new dogs. An intense physical fitness program on Camp Casey is pushing it to the limit. Specialist Jordine Matthews tells us all about this program. Get ready, three, two, one, go! CrossFit is definitely a lifestyle. It, uh, it changes everything, how you eat, uh, the way you dress, uh, the way you to look at a lot of things in life. Hit the window. There you go. Sounds like a man who's practiced this all his life, right? Wrong. Staff Sergeant Nicholas Smith's journey to CrossFit began with a chance encounter. I was actually on a Fort Hood powerlifting team at the time, and I went into a, a supplement shop, and a CrossFit coach was in there, and we got to talking, and I told him that I thought CrossFit was uh, just people doing squats and pull-ups. It wasn't real workouts, and I like to lift way too much to do it. And uh, he challenged me to come out for, he'd give me two weeks for free, and, and I did, and uh, I quit the powerlifting team the next day. In a room about 800 square feet, Smith coaches about 15 athletes that range from first sergeants to housewives. He's great. He knows what he's doing. He pushes us. He makes sure you're doing it right. If you're doing something wrong, he'll correct you. He, um, he's just, when he's like, come on, keep going, keep going, that makes everybody just pick up their bar and go. You don't want to stop. So he keeps you going. There you go. The six foot Smith says CrossFit isn't just about getting a workout. It's about building a sense of community and family. And when you come into a CrossFit gym, uh, if you're brand new, you know, people will just come up to you and, hey, how you doing? I'm so-and-so, and, you know, welcome to class, you know, and, and they encourage you. And so it's, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty big deal. I just would like to see it evolve as much as it possibly can. Uh, more equipment, more members, maybe some assistant coaches. Um, I have about 17 months, and uh, when I get out of the Army, I'm planning on going back to the States and opening my own CrossFit gym. Specialist Jordy Matthews, Camp Casey, Korea. The CrossFit program combines a mixture of aerobics, gymnastics exercise, and Olympic-style weightlifting. Admiral Samuel J. Locklear stopped at Osan Air Base, Korea as part of his tour of the Asia-Pacific to discuss issues impacting the region. Generally, the Asia-Pacific has been at peace for a long time. Now, it doesn't mean it's not without challenges, and there are a number of security uh, challenges. But I think that the, the number one challenge is to, just to ensure that peace and stability remain in place so that the global economic system can work, so that our own national interests are well, well protected in this region. Uh, and that uh, those interests of our allies and our partners are, are well looked after. Admiral Laglier visited Thailand after Korea. That was your Around the Peninsula for Thursday, February 20th. From all of us at AFN, enjoy your evening. <coughs> Donating blood doesn't have to be scary. Even though you're in Korea, you can still donate. Call your local hospital or Red Cross to get information on upcoming blood drives. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. Ain't gonna let join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual. Free at last, free at last.